ago you played in uh, Washington DC, right? Yeah. Now, how's this audience like? This audience is, uh, I think uh, European audiences are a little livelier than American audience. American audiences are a little concerned about being cool or, or uh, they do a lot of that pass and step people over. It's just kind of over with. Do Americans dig your music? Do what? Well, do the Americans dig your music? Oh, sure, sure. I mean, we sell more records there than we do over here, so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just heard that you're going to play on the Lowlands Festival near the end of August. Yes. yes. What Even is that? Uh, that's uh, in the middle of Holland, in the Polder area, which is uh, very green, a very nice area. There are lots of bands over there, and you're headlined for one of the first days of the Lowlands Festival. Oh, great, great. Even yeah. tussendoor vertellen. It is net bekend geworden here op het podium, vijf minuten geleden, dat Efken Wicks ook op het Lowlands Festival in Dronten zullen staan. Um, now, one more thing, Greg. Um, a lot of interviews and a lot of quotes by you are like, hey man, I play a lot of guitar sound, but I love rhythm and blues. Right. Now, give me your top. 10 of rhythm and blues oldies. My top 10 songs? Yes. Songs. Boy, that's kind of hard to do right now. Uh, I could give you my top, I could give you a bunch of my favorite singers. I like Tyrone Davis. I like Otis Clay. I like uh, Al Green. I like Otis Redding. I like Sam Cooke. Uh, God, who else do I like? All kind of, Jimi Hendrix. He's a soul singer. You uh, had one of the, uh, <coughs> you, well, you had one of the classics. <laughs> <laughs> you had one of the classics of James Carr on your latest single, uh, yeah, Dark End of the Street. Too. Yeah, Dark End of the Street is a great song. Now tell me, why did you pick that song? Uh, because uh, I think I like it because of what it's about. It's about, you know, two people that are together and uh, they're not supposed to be together because they're obviously married to different people, but they love each other and they want to, you know, they in order to be together, they have to uh, hide and do something that society and probably their respective spouses would say was wrong. <laughs> now that is uh, what well, a sweet song. Um, and you mentioned some other sweet names of singers, but do they fit into your music? They do because uh, we do it. I mean, we just played a Supreme song at maximum volume, you know, it, it, you know, it happens. There are, there are different ways to approach music, you know, I mean, just because we don't come out dressed up in matching, you know, soul man outfits and, you know, play at a low volume and, and do the dances and things like that. I mean, you know, we're not a soul band, we're a rock and roll band, but we like soul music, you know. Uh, in seven days time, you'll have to be in New York because you're gonna do a great gig, a great festival over there as well, big one. Uh, in Los Angeles. Uh, uh, in Lo same well, thing. that's a major city as well. Yeah, <laughs> big uh, American city, they're all the uh, same. Okay, well, um, <coughs> well, I'm sorry, we're gonna see you in the next couple of months here in Holland. You'll okay. be touring in August as well. I hope you enjoy your stay here in Holland. I'm having, I always have a great time in Holland. It's a beautiful country. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Am I done? Um, pardon? Am I done? Yes, you are. Okay, okay thanks, Greg. City met uh, Greg Dully from the Afghan Wigs. Hello, Greg. Hi, Brom. Are you having a good time here? I'm having a great time. Yeah. Are you having a nice time? I'm having a great time. You don't get to really see much back here, do you? Yeah, I see it over here on the monitors, and I sometimes walk to the stage. Uh huh. I like your show. Thank you. Yeah, I thought you. I liked it too. You liked it yeah. too. <laughs> one of we the, have something in common. Yeah, great. <laughs> so actually, we're going to have a look at uh, uh, one song from the from the show a little later on when they have it ready. Okay. One of my favorite songs. It's called uh, Fountain in Fairfax. All right. That came across uh, pretty good. I thought so too. Yeah. It, Again, we're in agreement. Yeah. <laughs> we're hitting <laughs> it right off. Let's stop this now, okay? <laughs> no, but uh, I I like the song, but I'm also uh, curious about some of the lyrics on the song. For mm -hmm. instance, the song starts out with a lyric where it says, "Angel, I'm sober. I got off that stuff, uh, just like you asked me to." Mm -hmm. So I was wondering what that was about. Does what the stuff was? Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's it's. You know, it can, you can be say anything. You can say it on Dutch television. Really? Yeah, you can say it. Go ahead. Do you know what Kool-Aid is? <laughs> it won't, no, no, no. It won't make it by. It's Kool-Aid. Okay. Is that some sort of uh, lemonade or something? Yeah, or? sort of. Oh. Because I was... It's later about somebody who drank too much Kool-Aid. I don't believe a word yeah, you're it's saying. Very, it's very American. It's oh, very I see. American thing. And then later, what, what do you, you... You talk about tying off, which I thought was uh -huh. you know, tying off what you do when you shoot heroin. Tying off like a boat, you know, when you uh, pull a boat into shore, mm -hmm. you tie it to a dock. Yeah. Tie it off. Oh, I see. So can mean many things. No, I'm seriously. Yeah, it, could, it could. It could obviously mean yeah, tying off to shoot heroin. It, it could have. It has many meanings, and that's yeah. why I I usually 
uh, write lyrics with meanings that can go either way. Uh -huh. So if you take it that way, if it means that to you, then that's what it means. See, I, it's, it's kind of strange to talk about lyrics because what it might mean to me might be completely different to yeah. you. Well, the lyrics on, on that last CD are very personal, right? They're very, they sort of talk about the struggle you obviously went through as a person. Mm. It's, it's about the struggle that someone went through as a person. It's not necessarily me. I was writing oh. within character a, a, a lot of the time, but certainly my own experiences were uh, represented in those songs. Mm. Let me just translate a little bit, because this otherwise is going maybe too far. Go right ahead. Op dat nummer waar we het net over hadden, uh, wordt gesproken over stuff waar de, de ik-persoon uh, van af zou zijn. En later in het nummer gaat het ook nog over jezelf afbinden. Uh, Greg die beweert wat je dus doet bij het uh, shooten van uh, heroïne. En ik was erg nieuwsgierig naar waar dat nummer nou eigenlijk over ging. Uh, en uh, Greg zegt dat uh, het nummer multi interpretabel is, dat die teksten zowel over heroïne zouden kunnen gaan als over... Het drinken van cool eet, wat gewoon een frisdrank is, of het glas cool of <laughs> vast of losbinden van een bootje. Maar ik hou het eerder op het, op het eerst. The reason I'm asking, the reason I'm asking is because the, the, the use of heroin mm. seems to have become something that's sort of cool among some of the young American uh, musicians and bands these days. Is that true or not? Well, I mean, heroin's been cool for a long time, you know. Yeah. I mean, people. As far as it being some sort of a, a, a status drug that if you do heroin, you're cool, I think, <clears throat> I think maybe some people mistake, you know, using drugs to enter a peer group or something like that. But the bottom line you know, is people take drugs for the effects that the drugs give them. And out of, of, of all the drugs, heroin is probably the most intense experience that you will have. Yeah, you talk, you talk, you know that? Have you taken have I it? Done, have yeah. I taken heroin? Yeah. Yes, I have. Mm -hmm. Not recently. Mm -hmm. So you managed to... To not I, I, get hooked. No, I didn't get hooked. Uh -huh. no, no, I experimented. I've, you know, I've tried just about every, you know, drug there is to try. I mean, that's a curiosity thing. Mm -hmm, I you know, you yeah. do some, you do things out of curiosity. I, you know, I experimented with drugs like anyone else did. Heroin to me is, you know, it's a very seductive, powerful drug, and it's taken a lot of people down. I mean, you, you know, I have a lot of friends that, you know, we all started, you know, trying things around the same time. Mm -hmm. And, uh, um, like at the end of high school or something? At the end of high school, yeah. in college, you know, just trying things together. And some of my friends, you know, couldn't separate whether it was, you know, a, a fun experience or a curious experience. I, I will honestly say that I enjoyed heroin. Enjoyed you? I enjoyed it. You enjoyed I it? it. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's a great, I think it's a great feeling. I mean, obviously, that's why people get hooked on it, because it's so great. You know? Let me just translate a little bit. I mean, it's quite important okay. what we're talking about. Hij vertelt dus dat hij uh, wel degelijk ooit he heroïne heeft gebruikt. En uh, dat hij ook veel mensen uit zijn schooltijd kent die als een soort experiment die druk uh, gebruikt hebben. En hij ge geeft ook eerlijk toe dat hij uh, er plezier van gehad heeft. Maar hij heeft ook mensen down zien gaan. Mensen die eraan ten onder zijn gegaan. Het is hem gelukt om in ieder geval niet verslaafd aan te raken. So, um, yeah, what are, you, what, are you, what are your feelings about this thing that it's becoming sort of a hip thing? It's dangerous because bands, they, they are like role models to, to young people. Well, I don't see bands shouldn't be role models to people because uh, most people get into bands to escape that kind of thing. They, you know, I mean, at least the people that I respect and the music that I enjoy and the music that I enjoy making, it's a, it's a very, you know, it's a very, you know, like you said, it's personal music and it comes from, you know, struggling to be a human being and understanding about yourself that is uh, you you know you're supposed to either you know lift people up or share something with them uh, as far as like role models you know you should pick role models that are like you know doctors and uh, <laughs> scientists people that are actually you know where you know musicians are just playing music and that should yeah. be their inspiration Let as me far just as a role, yeah, okay. yeah as far as what as far as role models, they should be teachers yeah, okay. and, uh, and scientists and doctors, people that actually bring something, you know, uh, tangible to the world rather than, you know, some musician, I think. Thank you, Greg. I'm, I'm afraid you're not right. People don't do it. Don't do that, what you just uh, right. say. But I understand that. But to me, you know, I've looked up to musicians, but I look up to them for the music they okay. make, not for the lives that they lead. Right. Let me translate yeah. a little okay. bit. Hij zegt dus dat uh, je beter niet popmuzikanten als rolmodel kan kiezen als je zelf fan bent. Neem een dokter of een tandarts of iemand die iets nuttigs doet in deze wereld. <laughs> en uh, uh, 
En nemen we dus ook geen drugs, uh, zoals sommige muzikanten dat dan wel menen te doen. En dat heeft misschien te maken met, het, met de leefstijl die je als popmuzikant hebt. Uh, let, let's just have a look at that uh, song I just, we just okay. talked about. Hier is dat nummer waar ik het net over had, waar dus die dubbelzinnige tekst in zit. Van de Atkin Wigs, zo net een uurtje wat geleden gespeeld, Fountain in Fairfax.